flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Not County. As always, drop a like on the video if you are enjoying the save. It really helps out the channel. We're starting today on Nikolai Schau. He's been out on loan at OB over in the, uh, nearly said the Netherlands there, over in Denmark uh, for a little while this year. A couple of goals for him out on, Ray, out on loan. Not too bad. Um, we're in a bit of an injury crisis uh, in the midst of it currently. Um, I actually had one game where I brought on a player after an injury and then they immediately went off injured as well. And we are really going to be struggling for troops at the moment, which is a problem. And I do expect to see a downturn in the form now that we're going to have to really dig deep to find some players. Um, we've sort of been balancing it out with injuries left and right, but now we're kind of starting to get a serious impact uh, with a load of them. And it's a problem. And now I really regret loaning out uh, Luetti. More on that in a minute. And I can't even recall call him. Oh dear, but that, that's on me. I heard a rumour that Jose Leilson Guerra's parents spoke French and Spanish respectively. That's why they settled on the middle name La El Sun, giving him a lifelong nickname, The Sun. Well, then maybe we should call him The war the Son of War. Ooh, that's got a nice ring to it. I read a book called The Sun not that long ago. Paolo Assman. For any wrestling fans, Mr. Ass's theme comes to mind. He's an ass man. Yes, I completely forgot about that. I haven't watched wrestling since I was about 13, I think, but that does ring a bell to me. Unfortunately, we can't use it because, of course, well, you know, YouTube. One thing that drives me mad about FM is that the AI seem to have an advantage in transfers. Quite often, players will choose an AI team for less money over a player controlled club. It's unrealistic. Nobody would sign for a club offering 52 grand a week less unless they were a diehard supporters of the club. I assume this was in relation to the Saracedo thing. Um, yes, but what I would say is I think Leon are in the Champions League, and as a result of that, that might have been the kicker. So perhaps he would have taken that deal in order to play in the Champions League for a bit, maybe. But then £52,000 a week is quite a lot over the course of a year. It's like, what, two and a half million? And obviously minus tax. Still looking at some solid money. Um, so maybe, yeah, it's still a little bit dodgy, but what can you do? I do often find that whenever we lose out on a player to another side... They often sign them on an insanely cheap deal to, compared to what we were having to offer just to get them to even talk to us. But it could also be down to our rep, unfortunately, because he's not the highest. Right, we've had a buttload of games off camera today. We're coming back for our final game in the Europa League group stages at home against Benfica. And there's quite a lot on the line in this match. So this is not going to be a dead rubber by any means. A home game against them, it could make the hugest difference coming the second half of the year. But what I would say is that there are a lot of goals now being scored from directly from set pieces. Rather than from the second phase, they're just going straight in now. And it's insane. But more on that in a sec. So our first game off camera was a 4-1 trashing at Liverpool. And I say that based on the fact that, yes, they were definitely the better side than us. All four goals were from set pieces. It was three indirect free kicks and a corner. And just to prove that I'm not just saying that now because it's a bit of a meme, I'm going to show you them all. Not in like 3D or anything to bar this ball in. Head of the back post, goal. 23rd minute, free kick whipped in, back post, goal. 60th minute, this time a corner, Dybala whips it in, straight into the back of the net. Keeper comes, just flaps. And lastly, 72nd minute, free kick whipped in, back post, hits the post, comes back to the guy, goes in. All four goals they scored were from set pieces. I was livid. Um, Because I was just like, okay, I hadn't seen that before. We did score a goal though through Guerra, which was very, very nice. Ball lopped over the top by Perrier. Guerra, first time volley, smashes it home. And it was that, actually made it 2-1. And I thought, okay, maybe there's a chance for us. There was not. But then this absolute brilliance came up. What a performance. Not We repeated our heroics of the FA Cup final. But what made this better is that we went down to 10 men after 10 minutes when Lamjed Chitiu was sent off for a two-footed lunge. He's been suspended for the next three matches too. And so started the uh, inevitability of players being missing through suspensions and injuries. It was gutting. But And then after a while, you know, we just dumped it on long. But look at this. Chance creation was insane. I think we had... We, well, we vastly out chanced them, that's for sure. Um, Esposito then gave him the lead with a lovely header from across, and I thought, great. But then not long after that, the ball was lumped down the field. Guerra took it down, knocked it around the corner, Lever went past his man, and then finished with a delightful little slot into the bottom corner to level up with a one-on-one, -on -one, scoring his first of the year, and you could see how good he was on the night. And then, in the second half, a very similar situation, was Guerra found himself through on goal, uh, thanks to Stepanek this time, and he was able to slot us 2-1 up. We held on for the rest of the night, and got ourselves a victory with 10 men against Chelsea. What a result this is. Very very much needed after the poorness against Liverpool. And no set piece goals, at least. Then came an away trip to Belgium in the Europa League. A 1 0 victory was all we could muster in this one, unfortunately. Uh, it was not the best of performances. Eventually, I brought Issa and Pepo off the bench. A lovely ball whipped in by Alberto, and Pepo was able to just strike it into the bottom corner to give us the victory away from home. I mean, we should have had more goals on the night. Don't get me wrong here. Dubois was phenomenal. We were just controlling the game. They only had one, two shots in the entire match, was insanity. Um, 
but we probably should have scored more goals. But Issa and Pepo has popped up with some important ones. He scored the winner in the Community Shield final. He scored the winner away in the Europa League now. He's getting some important goals for us. And that is certainly nothing to be sniffed at. And I'm, pr I'm proud of him for doing so. Then went to Burnley and things just took a turn for the ridiculous in this one. Uh, all three of our goals, as you can see, came from corners this time. Um... One of them wasn't direct, unfortunately. I mean, it sort of still was. The ball didn't ever leave the box. The ball was whipped in, headed away, sort of. Asman whips it back in, and Perrier strikes one, hits the post, Celso puts in the rebound, and the other two are just direct headers from corners. Uh, Guerra was phenomenal, of course, with his delivery. Celso and Perrier just controlling things there. And Silla also, after coming off the bench, made five key passes from the 70th minute onwards. I don't know what he was on. And, of course, Elton, that was from a free kick. Um, so, yeah, all four goals in this game were scored directly from set pieces again. And I was like, okay, that... It's a little bit much, but maybe it'll even out. Then against Leeds United, another excellent performance from us, but it took a penalty this time uh, for us to actually get the win on the night. Guerra was able to score it, of course, but we probably should have had two or three goals before this opportunity. So good to get the win on the night and another clean sheet, but really we've got to be scoring more in these sort of situations present themselves. Um, it wasn't ideal in this one as well because of the lack of... I mean, we had so many injuries. We had both um, Stepanek and... Um, Nielsen were injured, so uh, Guerra actually played on the right-hand side with Mpepo up through the middle this time but he was able to score the penalty so even with that sort of mismatch of players we still managed to get a victory which was important and obviously Santana had had an injury too which you guys know about so Lever had to play uh, he yeah this was his first game I think back and then in our final game off camera a two-all draw at Goodison Park I think we were very fortunate to get this uh, but we bloody needed it but as you can see both goals Celso, Perrier, Staff van Leuven uh, the only goal in this game that wasn't scored from a corner was Moise Ken's goal three more goals from corners in this match um yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot, I must say. In the off-camera games just alone, there's been, I think, 12 dead ball goals scored from both teams. It's crazy. But two more assists for Guerra. Um, but yeah, injuries galore in this one. Alberto comes off injured. Oleg Kazakov comes on for him. And then he is also injured. They're both going to be out for like a month. I don't know what to do in that situation. We are just getting injuries left and right at the moment, even when we try to rotate players around. Thing is, I've not actually got to the point where we can rotate players because they're getting injured before we even have the, necess before we have the necessity to rotate them um so that's a bit of a shitter but a very fortunate point i'd say away from home they were definitely the better side and for us to get that late equalizer through perrier very fortunate point point. and of course i don't want to harp on the old set pieces thing too much but there is a little bit too many of them going in for my liking um Gera, though 10 goals in the league and nine assists he's contributed to 19 of our 29 goals this season what an absolute lad we're into the europa league spots now seventh place uh, we've scored 29 times which is very very high plus 12 goal difference which is better than a lot of the teams around there uh if we could have held on for that win away at everton we'd actually be sitting fifth right about now which of course we're not but still a really good season we're having so far we are definitely in the battle for that seventh spot it feels like to me by the end of the season it's going to be between us and newcastle for that seventh because i feel like liverpool and tottenham will slowly ebb away so also already on nine yellow cards he's been a naughty lad this year uh burnley still 16 games into the season no wins on the board so far um, they did score a goal against us, which I believe was only their sixth of the season. So pulling a Brentford, it would seem. Watford really are struggling. It's actually crazy how bad Watford have been this year. But what can you do? Maybe it was just a, a series of freak situations with the whole corners and free kicks in one sort of cluster. And perhaps it would just even out. It was just very surprising to see Liverpool score all four of their goals from it. And then for us to do the same thing against Burnley. Um, and against... Leverton as well, three of the four goals there too. There's no longer second phase stuff, so that, that is nice to see, but they are just banging them straight in now. Technically, we are only missing two players, but they're both in the same position, and I actually don't know who's going to play there. It's going to have to be a youngster, because of course it's Europa League. And given the way things are, with the fact that they won their off-camera game, technically, we could still win this group if we win the match. I believe it's on head-to-head. -head. So if we can better their 1-0 victory over us, then we will win this group. And I really do want to win this group because I want to see how far we can go in the Europa League this year. And our best chance at doing that is, of course, going to be to make sure that we don't end up playing some massive side in the next game. So let's see what my assistant suggests. He wants to put Fernandez at left-back. Okay, we're not going to do that. Just going to turn on the undecided, the under-age squads and see who's actually available. My giddy aunt. We are out of left-sided players, basically. Oh, it might actually have to be Fernandez. That's not ideal. And I think that could cost us a dearly today. Thankfully, everyone else is back, which is nice. But Stepanek actually probably won't play. I feel like Nielsen will play over him just because he's not fit enough. And he's really been bad. He's not been that good this season either. For whatever reason, he just has not been at the races. Uh, I'm going to switch these two over. Because as much as you can't see it, let me just turn on the injury situation here. So Alberto's out. Kazakov's out. Gaic is out. Dubois... I believe was out as well, wasn't he? Not completely, but he has only just returned. 
So Andrei Yashchenko will be on the bench. It's it's not a good time at the moment. Like as fun as it's been to do the Europa League, I'm still trying to concentrate as much as I can on the league because it's really our priority is to try and get seventh place and just continue the build there. Uh, this was kind of just an experiment, although admittedly it's gone better than I thought it would do. We're actually doing all right in our group, and I think today. If we play as well as we did in the away game, we've got a real good shot at actually coming up with something here. But I am concerned about playing Hugo Fernandez on his wrong foot. We will be keen to avenge them. Let's try this out. I am concerned um, about our defensive setup. But at least the rest of the team, for the most part, with the exception of Dubois, only just returning from injury, is fairly straightforward. Thankfully, Guerra's not been injured. That would be the biggest loss for us this year, I think. The fact that he's got nine assists and ten goals already in the league and 12 goals in all competitions. The guy has been... An absolute revelation for us. Nielsen, he might just keep this in. He does, you know. Ah, wins the corner. That's fine. This group could legitimately get very tight because if we score and go 1-0 up, we'll be level on points, level on goal difference because theirs will go down one, ours will go up one, and also level on head-to-head. -head. So I guess it would come down to goals scored and I don't know if we're in front of them or not on that one. I love that their goalkeeper is called Odysseus. That is glorious. Santana. Jean Carlos. Oh, around the side for Santana. Oh, good touch. And get her. Well, I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that 22 minutes in, they've not had a shot and we've made all the early running. That That's definitely pleased. We've also had John Carlos have an injury in this period too. So Sancho Hansen had to play a load of games. And uh, well, actually we did okay. He didn't, but we did. Because we really do need this victory. A draw would make no difference to us. Silla, John Carlos, good strike. And Odysseus with the big save. Chitiu, lovely tackle. Fernandes has actually done very a very solid job on the left back spot. Nielsen, hopefully can win us another corner. Ball across. Santana over the crossbar again. Well, a little bit less on the chance creation, but it's about a carbon copy of the first game we played against them, where we were completely dominant, but we haven't got what we deserved from the match. And so far, we need to sort that out, but I'm going to have to press in the second half. It's a much higher line, a much higher press to try and stop them from playing it out from the back, win it off them high up the pitch. Now, obviously, it's going to leave gaps in behind, but at this point, the defeat and a draw are essentially the same thing. Gerda taking it from deep here, all the way through. Oh, Nicholas Nielsen gets on the end of it. Another assist, this time from much, much deeper from Gerda. The guy can really deliver a set piece. And amazingly, despite being a goal up, it looks like they have scored more goals in this group than us. So we can't get by. on the What a ball that is. And Nicholas Nielsen, with his second of the season, gives us the lead against Benfica. Exactly what we needed. Hmm. Well, we've kind of got to keep pushing. 1-0 is not enough. We need to go and grab a second goal in this one. So I'm going to just leave it on this tactic for now because that's our only option. We've just got to keep on pressing away and see if we can grab another one, which would allow us to win the group. Celso. I mean, five wins out of six would be pretty impressive from this group. Santana. We've done all we needed to do. Santana driving through. Jean Carlos around the side for Nielsen. Having a good game so far. Dinks it across and Guerra! Oh, it's 2-0. Jose Lelson Guerra with his 13th goal of the season. And Pepo, I think, got 14 last year, all in the Premier League. And, and our, this guy, it's not even Christmas yet, and he's nearly matched that. Lovely work from Nicholas Nielsen. Dinks it up. Guerra with the touch. It's 2-0 over Benfica. I kind of want to keep pressing. Can I just say how impressed I've been with what Fernandez has done, playing as a left-back on his wrong foot tonight? He's been completely solid. Silla. Out wide for Fernandez. He's going to have to cut. Wow. Even tried to cross with his left, although that could be the mistake. They've not had a shot on target tonight so far. And, oh no, Donald Traore is through. What a block. And what a, mm, okay, now we change. Fernandez could be playing there for a while yet. Nielsen's in again. And he scored another one. Notts County three, Benfica nil. And Nicholas Nielsen has scored twice and set up the other one. Where's this come from? We really have rocked on in this second half. Um, considering we've got that slight gap in the defense, it's a really nice ball from John Carlos. Lovely ball around the corner. But Nielsen, so calm. Lovely strike. Odysseus can't reach it, and it's 3-0. My lord. Well played. And then Pepe on for Gida. Just so that we get important players out of the uh, out of harm's way. And Pepe whips one in. All the way clear to Perrier. He can't turn. Silla. And then Pepe! Good save by Odysseus. Despite being missing players. Jean Carlos. It's really not affected us from a defensive standpoint. And we've been so good going forward, it hasn't even mattered. Lever. Silla? Oh my goodness, what a strike. El Haji Silla's first of the year. It's 4-0 over Benfica. This is the performance we needed in the away match, but in the end, it hasn't mattered. Darren Lever with a nice little assist here. We're just controlling the ball in their box. Look at this for play. I mean, admittedly, it's from the clearance here, but Lever just knocks it across for Silla, takes a touch, thunder strike. Absolute legend. There we go. We really have let the world know something here. To so beat Benfica 4-0.
is quite something. The only time we lost in this group was that narrow 1-0 defeat to Benfica, and this will hopefully buy us a much more favourable draw in the second round. Oh, sorry, well, you know what I mean, the first qualifying round. Notts County 4, Benfica 0. Probably our greatest ever European victory by that stretch. Two goals for Nicholas Nielsen. He set one up as well. Uh, Guerra got one too, as did Haji Silla. Wonderful performance. And Pepo didn't really do a lot when he came on, but he was mostly just there to avoid getting any injuries to other players. Same with the likes of Celso. Beautiful stuff. Well, that has earned us a lot of money. God, look at our record as of late we really have been stacking up the victories we've not actually drawn a game uh, we've only drawn one game rather since that bournemouth result earlier this year uh four straight wins in all competitions in there a draw in there too we look like we've got something about us so i feel like we're going to do a nice little simple one here come back for west brom and Wolves with a nice little double live com leading us up to january so that's going to be fun plus that means in the next episode i imagine we'll have a youth previews to talk about maybe see if we can get another golden generation i uh, did, didn't have one last year and i don't think we have one the year before either so it'd be nice if we could get a good player through the youth academy this year not quite darren lever level i think he's probably the best player i've ever had through my youth intake in all honesty although i've said that a few times in this save so if you've enjoyed this episode drop a like that'll be smash that'll be smashing and if you're new to the channel subscribe i will join you guys very very soon as always hold your gun capybara thank you so much for watching Bye bye